Hey booktube, this is Sonia from An Enthusiastic Reader and I'm here today to do my October 2018 wrap up. I read four very good books and one pretty good book this month and so I thought I'd share with you what I read and what I thought about these books. These are really in no particular order. Um, the first one I'll talk about is Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. I read this as my contribution to Victober. Um, many other people read exclusively Victorian novels, but I just read one, and Mary Barton was a great addition to my Gaskell backlist. I've read North and South and Wives and Daughters and her uh, biography of Charlotte Bronte. So this is the fourth Elizabeth Gaskell I've read in the last couple of years, and it was you know, pretty good. It was her first published novel. It was the story of a girl who, after her mother dies, is kind of grappling with how to be uh, a lady or how to find romance as she, you know, goes through her formative years with a father who isn't paying that much attention to what will happen to her. Um, he's very much uh, embroiled in labor issues. He works in a factory and so he is constantly battling with the powers that be trying to get more wages and more almost you know not benefits but some consideration by the bosses I guess I'll say and it's a very tough struggle because the factory owners in the town in Manche Manchester are not at all amenable to caring about the workers so there's a lot of entanglements, um, misplaced romance, uh, interesting characters, some stock characters, and uh, there was a lot to like about it. The things that st stood out for me in Mary Barton were Gaskell's uh, empathy for the poor. This shows up time and time again. The real struggles and suffering and misery of the poor workers in Manchester. Uh, gender expectations. Mary Barton's father, John, does not want her to be a factory girl, but he gives her very other, very few other uh, alternatives, so the only thing she can do is to get married, and he doesn't give much guidance on that either. So he's not a very uh, attentive father, and he gets more and more melancholy as the book goes on. Um, there's a lot of Christian moralizing, of course. Um, that's a big theme of this book that, I mean, it's very understandable for the time, but it does detract a little bit from the story. Um, there's a lot of tenderness for family. People will do acts of charity for each other and acts of kindness and give things up and suffer for the betterment of other people. There are some genuinely tense moments. There's uh, a mystery and uh, there's a real peril for one of the characters. You don't know what's going to happen to him and if he will be okay or not and if Mary's future will be secured or not. So that's a very interesting part of the book. Gaskell has a lot of very on-point human observations that I liked. Uh, talking, there are just a lot of passages where she will make a, an astute observation and that brings me to my favorite part of the book was the narrator as a character. You don't know it's an unnamed narrator, an un, unnamed omniscient narrator, but she still has a personality and I'm attributing a female character to her because she just feels like it's Elizabeth Gaskell talking to us. I thought that was fun that the narrator's voice is actually a kind of character in the novel. Still want to keep going with more Elizabeth Gaskell novels. Mel from Mel's Bookland Adventures was talking last month about reading Wildfire at Midnight by Mary Stewart, so I decided to give it a try. I found it uh, a Kindle version available and it's a kind of a caustic, cozy mystery. There are a lot of well-drawn characters. There's a real sense of heightened drama. The atmosphere is very uh, spooky at times, and you can feel the fear creeping up on the main character as she's sneaking around in the dark in this inn. So uh, I'd say give it a try if you'd like to try a Mary Stewart novel. 
I read Transcription by Kate Atkinson. This was an, an espionage novel that takes place in Britain during World War II uh, about a young orphaned girl who is perfect fit for becoming a spy. And I won't say much more than that other than um, the main character is very funny and kind of sarcastic and she has a lot of parenthetical asides about everything she's talking about and was fun to read her transcribing these scenes where they are trying to get uh, information out of Germans in the war. So that was, uh, it was a very typical Kate Atkinson read. The she has a feel to her writing that is very familiar. If you read Life After Life or A God in Ruins, you feel like you're in that same London world. And I kept waiting for Ursula Todd from Life After Life to pop in and she never did. And I was like, ah, I would love to see a little bit of a crossover of some of the characters from those books, but it didn't happen. This is not David Mitchell, this is Kate Atkinson. So we didn't get that uh, treat. I will read it again someday. Um, I did have a quibble with something and I won't say what it was because I don't want to set up an expectation in case you want to read the book and are wondering the entire time what I was quibbling with. But if you've read it and you'd like to know what trouble I had with the book, you know, message me somehow um, and we can talk about it privately. I don't want to ruin it for anyone else, but all in all, yay Kate, good job. And the last book I want to talk about for my October wrap-up is How to Be Famous by Caitlin Moran, M-O-R-A-N. This book is about a 19-year-old girl who leaves home to become a music writer in the 1990s in London. So she's kind of thrust into this very male-dominated, misogynistic, uh, jerky world and tries to figure out her place in this hierarchy of personalities and drug addled alcoholic kind of typically gross older men i mean it's much more funny than i'm just saying there's a lot of wit a lot of um, heart in this novel about this girl it's kind of about her sexual education and her finding her way uh finding her way in this pre-internet society. There is some internet in this, but it hasn't started to dominate the culture like it does now. So um, it's a capital R romance novel. I mean, it's a Me Too novel for the 1990s. And I do like the way the main character champions teenage girls because in this world and for eons, teenage girls are some of the least valued members of our society. So there is this uh, appeal to please take care of and cherish our teenage girls. And I love that part of it. And there was a lot to love about the novel and I did laugh a lot. All in all, I don't think I'll remember it and I'm not gonna be clamoring to read more of this author probably, but for what it was, which was kind of a modernized, um, yet slightly retro Bridget Jones's diary. Um, it was a success. I'd give it about a three and a half star rating. Um, so yeah, uh, we'll be talking about it at book club on Sunday and we'll see if people enjoyed it. I think they probably did. That's all I've read for October. Uh, I'm in the middle of reading a very intriguing and kind of experimental novel called Asymmetry, and I'll let you know more about that as I get toward the end. Um, it's a brief novel, and it's unlike anything I've read in a while, so I think it might appeal to some of you. So thank you for subscribing to my channel, for watching this video, for your really kind comments. Uh, it's, it's made my last month you know, better than it would have been. So thanks again, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.